Right, so today I want to talk about the CSS calc method. This is a way that you can actually calculate sizes, whether it's widths or font sizes or line heights, anything that you would use a numeric value for, you can use the calc method to calculate this. And you can use values of different units. So on my simple web page right here, I've got a header with an H1 paragraph inside of a section. Um, just some pretty basic startup code here. Font size is set at a default of 20 pixels. Uh, 2.4 times that is my H1 size. The paragraph is set to one REM, so that's 20 pixels in height. Now, the paragraph element itself has got a white background and we've got blue on the section. And that's why we're seeing these little blue bits right here. That is the background for the section. That is there just to illustrate sizes. So I'm gonna start working with the width. And inside of here, in the paragraph, I'm going to set an actual width. Now, if I just had one value, I could say, you know what, I want to do 50%, or I want to do 50% the viewport width. Fair enough, there it is, 50% of the viewport width is the width of my paragraph. But if I wanted to do, let's say, 90% less 300 pixels, whatever that works out to be. So depending on how big the screen is, I'm going to be 300 pixels plus 10% less than that total width. Well, I can't just write this like this, but with the calc method, what we can do is we can do that. With calc, I can put my calculation inside of here. Whatever expression I want to use, whatever numeric expression with whatever units that I want to use. If I didn't put units on one, it's going to default to the other one. So we've got right here, this is going to change. As I shrink the screen here, you'll see that the size of this remains a constant 300 pixels less than 90% of the width. Okay, so that's with basic widths. We can even use variables. So CSS variables, if you've got those defined, let's create some up at the root level. So up at the very top, let's create a variable called um, min width. And I'll set that to my 300 pixels. Now I can use this variable inside my calculation. So if I'm using that value in a couple of other places, that's okay. So put our min width in here. I can use this variable over and over again. There we are. Same thing as before, but now I'm using a variable. So if that variable is being used in multiple places, we're good. Okay, let's talk about font sizes now. Now, here we've got a font size that's relative to the HTML. We've got a font size here relative to this one. So if I did some sort of calculation at this point right here, these are automatically going to pick up whatever the change is. So we could say that I want to do a calculation where I'm taking 1% of my viewport height plus 1% of my viewport width plus we'll say six pixels added on top of that. So whatever the total is of those three values, and that will change depending on the size of the screen. I save that. This creates my base size, and then these ones will be based off of whatever that value is. Now, it's important to note here, if you're using plus and minus, you do have to leave a single white space or a minimum of one white space character right here. We can't do this. That's not going to work. We have to make sure that we leave gaps in there. And that's only because it is possible to use negative values. Okay, so that's saved. We're back in here. Now, these fonts, this looks a little bit bigger than it was before. Same thing with the title. As I resize my page, you can see that the size of the fonts are changing. And that's because my base size is changing depending on whatever the viewport height and width are. If I jump into computed here, Let's go to my HTML element, computed, and we'll scroll down looking for font size. There it is, 26.92 pixels. That is my default size with that 1VH plus 1VW plus 6 pixels. 
that is the value that I've got right now. Now there is one other formula. This is a pretty simple one, and if you want to use something like that, that's great. Uh, there is another formula that I've seen. Here's the article right here. Mike um, Reithmuller, I believe his last name is. Um, he has a bunch of different variations on this using pixels or REMs and EMs. Um, even has some examples with line height that you can use as well. So I'll leave this link in the description for you. We can come in here. The basics of his formula are this. If we're doing a calc, inside of the calc, what we're going to do is we're going to take our minimum font size, and that's that 20 pixels that we're working with. Then we're going to add to that the difference between the minimum and the maximum. So my max font size, the biggest font size that I want, subtracting the minimum font size. The result of that, we're going to be multiplying that by, and inside of here, there's two parts to it, the 100 viewport width minus the minimum width that our screen is going to be, and that's going to be divided by the max width subtracting the min width of the screen. So there's our formula right here. Now let's change this one. I'll leave this one just in comments. So we'll do our calculation here, font size. And we're going to substitute some values inside of here. The stuff in the brackets here, the max font minus max font size minus the minimum font size. We just have to put a number. We don't have to put the unit for this. And the same thing over here, we don't need units for this. So let's just say our minimum font size, the smallest font we want to use on the page is going to be 16 pixels. And to that, we're going to add max font minus the min font. So the biggest, let's say 36, subtracting the 16, that's our smallest. We're multiplying that by 100 viewport width minus, again, keeping that space inside there. There's the 300 pixels, and we're going to divide that by, let's say the biggest that we want to work with is 2,000 pixels, and the smallest, we'll say 300 pixels wide, is going to be the smallest size that we want to work with, smallest width that we're going to work with. And there is our font and it is adjusting nicely. You can also combine this with media queries if you want. So if you had um, at the bottom of here, let me fold in these sections here. So we could do an at media. And we'll say under 600 pixels. So max width is going to be 600 px inside of here the HTML value so let's say once we get under 600 pixels I'm going to override this calculation and I'm going to say my default font size and this is just for illustration purposes let's say it's going to be 40 pixels just so it's really noticeable there we go so once I got to that 600 pixel point, we can see the other one took over. And at that point, it's becoming a static size. So you may want to do something like that. Once you get below a certain threshold or above a certain threshold, I should be using that as part of the calculation here, my 600 and my 600. But you can combine these calculations with media queries as well. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I hope you uh, find that useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll answer as many as I can. And as always, thanks for watching.